In this video, we're gonna be working on this Dodge Ram 1500 SST edition with our Hemi swap. So if you guys have been following along, you'll know that we've got the Hemi in here. We took out the 727 built transmission that it had in here, removed it, we're going eight speed. Also, we completely disassembled the dash and we were looking for a dash that wasn't obliterated. We found it. The last episode, we reinforced it. And now I've got dash stuff everywhere and I wanna put it back together. So also in the last episode, we ordered one of these. I'll link these down in the description for you guys, but it is a complete upper replacement, not just a cover, but it's actually got the structure to it where the bolts and screws go in. So we're gonna first things first, assemble our dash. We also painted the frame. So this was our old rusty frame. We painted it all. And now we're gonna put everything back onto this frame, put on the new cover, put on the tan pieces and get it going. So let's get straight into it. Reassemble the dash, then we'll move on to the next thing. you guys check this dash out so i'm super happy with the results if you guys ever decide to tackle something like this a few things when you drill out the rivets you can actually use the same screws so i was gonna re-rivet everything but um you can reuse the screws so i had an excess of screws and screwed it all into place you can uh, use it with the original size holes you don't have to drill it out or anything just literally put the screws in and it'll bite so that way you can control how much pressure you're applying to the plastic with a rivet. It kind of just, you know, snaps at its own uh, rate. But anyways, she came out beautifully and I'm super happy with this aftermarket top. Like check out the fitment, came out really good. I still gotta clean the actual tan dash. I haven't even cleaned it since we got it, but look at that fitment. She is beautiful. And then even here, all of our vents bolt up. That's the advantage I was telling you guys about doing it this way versus a dash cover you can actually get a much better result so and the other thing too is i just placed this here i didn't click it in or anything but you can see here how it screws into the front and again fitment was awesome like it was a little bit warped just out of shape because it didn't have this to it but once you kind of manipulate it and you get your screws in the fitment is awesome you guys so this is now adding strength to the rest of our whole piece here because like i said Having the dash top and this part also mounts back here. There's a screw here that mounts it to the frame. So it's holding and adding rigidity and strength to the rest of your dash. So definitely would advise to go with this method. I kind of like the fact that it's originally, you guys remember it was that brownish color, but I really like the black with the tan. I think it looks better than the brown. That was the only brown piece in the whole vehicle was just the dash top. So I think the black with the tan looks great. And I also want to show you guys this, like before I toss this old frame, like look at how flimsy this thing is. So it twists and has zero strength. So that's why all the strength of your dash comes from the plastic. So that's why you want to reinforce it. Like look at how much flex is in this thing. So that's why you want to have this good and this good to reinforce your main structure. But anyways, that's over and done with. Let's go on to the next thing. All right, it's the next day. We got Dennis over. We are going to take off the oil cooler, heater, whatever we're calling this thing. We're gonna take off the whole box. I picked up the correct size tap so that we can put these in here. Also, you can obviously see I've got the transmission up on the transmission hoist. And I'm gonna pop this off. I got the correct size tap. We're gonna tap these out and then we'll put this in. So let's do it. Okay, so I got my tap. If you guys are wondering, it's a three quarter dash 16. And then this is Dennis's idea. We used a squishy earplug to block the port. And I'm gonna go ahead, we'll tap this out, and then we can put our fitting in. All right, so we got our AN fitting. I just did the top one just so I could kind of show you guys. And same thing with the bottom. We're gonna plug it, tap it, and then we'll be good to go. And if you guys are wondering why we removed all this, so we wanted to remove the heater because essentially it's like a, I think it's an EPA related thing that heats up the transmission faster. So obviously we don't want that. I could have just capped it and kept that big old box, but I wasn't sure how it was gonna fit in the chassis and just having that extra monstrosity on the side, it's just nicer to clean things up. Plus 
it had the factory fittings on it. This is gonna be with the AN. Yeah, all those reasons. Okay, there we go. We got our two fittings on there, sealed up, and what? Working. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we got the flex plate for the 727, so that's got to come off. Over there on the floor, I've got the flex plate for the 5.7, so let's go ahead and swap it out. So transmission is in. We've got the Holly mount on the back. So I'll link this down below for you guys for a different application, but it looks like it's gonna work out pretty decently. So um, I'm gonna have to probably fabricate something between here, but I'm actually gonna grab the factory transmission mount, the rubber mounted one, and uh, it's in the back of the truck. So I gotta put it down quickly, but we'll see how it positions in there. It might, uh, might bolt up, find out in a minute. We ended up getting this done. So we ended up using a modified Hooker Blackhearts um, transmission mount so we cut it up flipped it this is I think the original to the truck this is what was on my truck so but they had modified this fit 727 so not sure how original this looks but we ended up mounting it to the original cross mount and yeah the other crazy thing is we're gonna try right now I'm pretty sure the stock drive shaft from our fourth gen single cab is going to bolt up me and Dennis kind of messed with it just quickly and it looks like she's gonna go so got some bolts here we're gonna go ahead throw it on see what happens all right so it looks like it will work so we're bolted up on the front it's gonna work and this uh we can extend right there only difference is the u-joints we need to get a different one we actually need to get one for a 97 dodge ram it looks like because these caps are a little bit too large a diameter for our yoke here so um, we have a few options. We could technically put like the newer style with the flange and then the other flange on here if we want to go that way. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Either way, this won't just simply slip into there. Okay, so we're gonna try something here. This is the newer style flange. And then we had earlier converted it to this style yoke here or flange. And then we're gonna actually try to put this one on it. And it might actually make our drive shaft length a little bit better. So. This one bolts to that. You might not have to go to get a different universal. So we'll go ahead, try it, see what happens. Okay, check this out boys. So it ended up working. So we converted it to this style, put this flange back on. Um, it seems like the backlash definitely needs to be adjusted, but we're gonna take out the 355 gear set, put the 392 from that axle afterwards, but she's bolted up. Check this out. We've got our slip here all the way forward. We've got our eight speed in here. This just worked out too nice. So right now we've got a full drivetrain. So now we're gonna put it down and uh, we've got to run our connector here into the cab, get all that wiring going. So I think that's what we're gonna mess with next. So. Let's do that. Also, we're gonna have to loop this dash eight as well for our cooler. I'm um, still gonna put in our torque converter bolts as well, but we're not really ready to start it just yet, but let's uh, move on. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna go ahead and pull the whole HVAC box because if you guys remember, there was a ton of stuff shoved down in there and I need to make sure that it's clean before we put the new dash back in there. So I'm gonna pull the whole HVAC box, disassemble it, probably wash it, degrease it, so I just popped off our two heater core lines and I took off most of the bolts. There's a few still holding it on the inside, so I'm gonna pull it out. I'll probably inspect the heater core as well. It doesn't appear to be leaking because we were running water through it. I didn't see anything come through inside. So we'll check all that stuff out, but let's go ahead, pop it out and we'll get to work. All right, so here it is. Looks like we've got a few nuts here to remove. So we got this one here, that one, and then we'll see what else is holding this thing on to our firewall. Okay, so apparently it was just this stud and this one on the inside holding it and the whole thing comes free just like that so there is the ones that go through the firewall but this is this here so let's take this out it looks like there's a series of screws that holds the bottom half together and uh, that way we can get this thing all washed up since there was a whole ecosystem living in here before we got this vehicle okay, so here we go we split the HVAC box and this was all the 
junk that I was mentioning to you guys. So I was able to get in here somewhat when I was cleaning, but I couldn't get all of it. And you can see it's all trapped in here. So we're gonna go ahead, clean this out. We'll vacuum all this junk out, give it a rinse, degrease all this, let it dry, and then we can toss her back together. And also here is the heater core, the original one. It wasn't leaking. You can see there's still water in it. No leaks out of it. And it is a brass unit, so it's definitely a decent one. Not sure if I'm gonna replace it. Might throw it back together, but uh, yeah, that's that. Actually, no sooner did I say that, I just poked this little thing here because I saw this little sludge and it is a little bit of water. So probably makes sense to replace the heater core because she's going to leak. Okay, so HVAC box is clean. I also cleaned out the AC unit and I ordered a brand new heater core just so that we don't have to worry about it since that other one was showing a tiny bit of signs of leakage. All right, so we got Dennis, he stopped by again. He's helping us out. So we actually went and got a heater core. Uh, found that our AutoZone had one. It's a, a Spectra version. So got a new heater core in there just so that we don't have to worry about that one leaking since it was starting to leak. And what we're doing right now is we got this thick foam tape and we're replacing all the old foam tape that was all disintegrated on here so that our firewall is all nice and sealed up and then dennis is working on the one that comes from the exterior as well so we've got upgraded foam here and then uh, we're going to throw this hvac box back in and we can put our dash in and figure out where we're going to mount our transmission control module So we've got the HVAC box in there. Now, some of you guys might be mad. We are removing the column shifter. <laughs> hey, sad days. 1999. 99 is out. Look at this. Let's see. <laughs> 99 is out. In with the new. Next up, the most fragile dashboard in automotive history is going to be carefully brought into here and into place. All right, you guys, check this out. We've got our new dash in here, and this looks so good. This is uh, really hard to get a good Gen 2 dash in one of these these days, at least the 94 to 97. But this thing fits mint, you guys. So if you guys are interested or curious on this thing, I'll link it down below for you guys where I purchased it. But this thing is solid. Like putting this brand new top lid in here reinforces the whole dash plus we reinforce the back of our old dash that you can't currently at the making of this, this video purchase the main structure of the dash so this thing is super super solid so pretty happy with the outcome so now it's a matter of putting all of our electrical back in wiring everything up we've got our harness here for our transmission that goes down into there and we ran the plug through the floor over there and we're gonna go ahead and get this all buttoned up. So a lot of this factory harness I have to plug back in. I'm gonna put our bracket with our Holly Terminator X Max over here and start getting everything situated. I also have to put in the SRS module back in there because we took it out to uh, get the dash out. And uh, yeah, just get a bunch of stuff buttoned up, but making huge progress, you guys. Okay guys, so I just spent a little bit of time cleaning things up, buttoning up some stuff, but I gotta go through the wiring also, I do have to order our shift knob, so I gotta get that and figure out how we're gonna situate it, but at the moment, this is how it's looking like it's gonna go. We're gonna move our climate control over here. Shift knob will go here, and we might try to fit in some sort of stereo radio um, unit right here. So we'll figure all that out, map it out. Also, I gotta do a bit more wiring so that I can hopefully get the factory tack working, hopefully the speedo, all that good stuff, fuel gauge, all the good stuff like that. So I think we accomplished quite a bit in this episode though, you guys, if you think about it, we got the dash in here, we got the transmission in here, drive shaft, 
and we got everything well underway. So I think just even, even if it was just one episode of us getting the dash in here in one piece, I think we would accomplish a lot. But the fact that the eight speed is in here, we're starting to get the wiring for our eight speed underway. And not only that, but somehow, some way, the factory drive shaft from that truck when we Hellcat swapped it fit perfectly in this. Not that it's that much different in size, but just the fact that it ended up fitting is a huge relief. It's gonna save us a ton of downtime too, because it would have taken probably a week or two weeks to have a drive shaft fabricated. So super happy there as well. But if you guys are enjoying this series and content, let me know what the best part you guys like of this whole series is. Give it a thumbs up. In the next episode, I'm just waiting on the starter motor to show up, a couple more pieces, and then I'll be able to fire this thing off. So we are very close to this thing being running and driving with an eight speed and a Hemi in it. So thanks for watching guys. Check out the other videos on how we got to this point. We'll see you guys on the next one.